speak in English because I have only 10, 15 minutes in order to give you the whole story. So I'm distinctly uh, honored to be with you here today. And um, I'll tell you, RCEP is the one of the rare regulators that have taken the task of finishing exactly what he said to move to one single internet. As the um, as if we look at the story of the internet, it was not an easy one. As a matter of fact, with IPv6, it's a lot easier. If you look at the past, basically the internet was shut down between 85 to 91. Uh, so that's the time when X25 has been added an ATM. So it took a long time in order to understand that ATM is not gonna do it. So people went back to an open source protocol, which is the internet. And then uh, we had two internets running at the same time. So internet and internet. The internet has really killed the end-to-end -end model. In this case, a lot of security, and especially email and so on and so forth, you know, all kind of protocol like SSL and, S and TLS have been killed by NAT. That's why our emails are not secure. So it's, it's you know, when you receive an envelope from, uh, from a customer, it is an envelope, nobody opens it. But when you receive the same thing on email, everyone can read it. So this is something really fundamental that we have to work on. And as the opening has said, we'll have to move to a single internet. That is the, will be the uh, new internet. So your task is not yet done. You got one decade of work in order to achieve this one. This is really fundamental. And the, the main benefit will be the end-to-end -end model. So it's similar to your phones. I guess you have plenty of phone numbers. Anyone has an IP address in this room? You see? You are not in the internet. You're just basically a tourist on the internet. So it's like in the phone system, you have your own phone number. It empowers you because you can make transactions. You can call, do business and so on and so forth. You don't do that directly on the internet. You have to go through a third party and that's not really empowering. So the innovation is to come from this end to end model for all kinds of applications. And uh, we started this work, you know, a long time ago. And I have to say that France was really a pioneer in promoting IPv6, especially pushing, pushing six bone. So with Patrick and some of the people that are present here. And even we had uh, a minister of research, Claude Enuré at that time, she has supported that. And I'm glad that uh, basically RCEP was supported by IDATI uh, and the IPv6 Forum Council that we have also here. In, in, uh, in France, supported by the Internet Society. So, so I think you have really a fundamental base in order to do this. In terms of deployment on a worldwide basis, we have crossed 50% a long time ago, because in the numbers that you see, you don't have China with their phone number. It's 760 million. As a matter of fact, 763 million. Three million could be a country in Europe. And we did not put that number in there. Uh, because the number is not checked by Google, so you can't see the numbers of IPv6 users in China. Okay, the numbers, are the correct ones, are this one. I'm very pleased to see that France has number one, 73% penetration, which is excellent, followed by Germany. And the US are still behind in 50%. Obviously, the US has plenty of address space, so even the US government has 1 billion IP4 addresses. And 1 billion IP4 addresses are in, in the spam house, which we cannot use. So if you buy any IP address from anyone, be for sure it's a hacked IP address. A lot of people have been using it for a long time. So don't touch all these addresses. And a lot of people are buying addresses as well. And people talk about $60 for an IP address. That is wrong because you don't get one IP address, you get a block. And the smallest block is slash 24 where you have 256 IP addresses that you have to buy now to get one IP address. So 60 times 256, that's $15,000 for a block. Anyone ready to buy an IP six, an IP for address for $15,000? No, not even the ISPs. So that's why the move to IPv6 is really fundamental. So, so look, when I asked you, do you have an IP address? No, because you have a NAT address, you are in the luggage class, all right? Only, only the servers have an IP for address, otherwise, they will not be able to communicate. So anyone is on IPv6 already in business class and people don't know it because that's the beauty of IPv6, it just works. So you don't need to bother about this one. And obviously when, when we move to IPv6 only, then we'll have first class internet 
and many innovations are going to happen. And some of the stats have shown that the impact of IPv6 uh, from the Roland Berger uh, uh, consultancy, it will be in the area of $10 trillion value by the end of this decade. So you are really working on something which is fundamental. 10 trillion, that's 10% of the world uh, GNP, uh, GPE uh, on this planet. So, so it's a massive impact uh, down the road. So quickly on the web generations, you can, you saw a lot of people talk of Web3. This is a pseudo uh, protocol. It doesn't have any standard. And the same thing with Web2.0. It's not a protocol. So the only protocol we have is basically Web1.0. And Web3.0 invented by uh, Tim Burnsy when he was pissed off with Tim O'Reilly you know, to create semantic web, but this one, this one didn't pick up. So we work with um, Dave Raggarts on the web of things and the protocol is, it will be deployed very soon. And as of late, uh, Gavin Wood has started Web3, which is basically the blockchain based web. It still has to be done. I think it needs IPv6 in order to have end to end. Otherwise, a blockchain requires peer to peer. So peer to peer is like what in the past we did not want to have, you know, like many uh, Napster and that kind of stuff. So a lot of people said, no, you can, you can hijack uh, uh, things with it. And then uh, basically uh, the second biggest uh, killer application of the internet after the web was basically 3G. And 3G uh, at 3GPP uh, within Etsy, they wanted to have the, the protocol called WAP, Wireless Access Protocol. So I intervened there and I told them, look, we already have half a billion people using the internet. Why don't you put them, put also the TCP IP in your protocol instead of only IMS and, and web. So it took about six months to convince them. And then we added IP. That's why on 3G, you could uh, basically have internet access. But 4G with the iPhone, basically iPhone has killed uh, 3G. That's why we have basically uh, all kind of internet applications on 4G and as of late, uh, uh, 5G, and then we'll be moving to 6G. There's a lot of hype in this area. So the, the uh, spectrum use for it is terahertz. Terahertz has a lot of limitations. You can do only 10 meters of the distance and it does not cross the walls and windows and so on and so forth. So it will be just indoor access, but you will have terabit access. So there are opportunities to basically, in the data center, we have a lot of spaghetti fiber, then you can replace it with terahertz modems then you will have terabit access within these places or in these assembly lines in the manufacturing. You can use it indoor. It will not be for outdoor unless we create printing on the roads, basically 3G, uh, 6G uh, spectrum. They will have access to, to that all the time. But uh, you know, some people are uh, crazy about doing these things as well. And in IoT, I'll be quick, RADA, IoT 3 using IPv6, you'll have a two-way things to things. This is the fundamental uh, innovation for IoT devices. If they cannot talk to each other, it's useless. So you want to have millions of IoT devices talking to each other and giving you only the decision-making decisions. So the information that is valuable, it will replace basically all the work that we do in data. Uh, 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 data You have still to work on it and compile it and so on and so forth. And the biggest data in the future will be big IoT data. That will be really big. And a lot of companies have now moved to IPv6 with IoT, as well as with LoRa. I think uh, maybe uh, LoRa, you, you're going to talk about it for uh, yourself. So this is going to be a really fundamental thing. So, so I will not go into this detail on uh, on data generations. So in terms of cloud computing, so I just uh, you know a lot of people tell me that Africa is not uh, doing anything for the internet. As a matter of fact, two South Africans that that's uh, Pinkham and uh, Van Billion from the University of Cape Town invented what is called uh, uh, wide, uh, what is called uh, uh, I, have, I have a little hole in the, in the concept so it's called Elastic IP and they were hired by AWS back in 2005 that invented the AWS which which is now one of the biggest but they they left nobody has taken care of adding IPv6 to AWS and this great lady from Romania Alexandra Huidas she has a CCIE uh, with Cisco, and she has deployed IPv6 on a worldwide basis in the last six months. So I had a, in a conference that we did uh, at, at our IPv6 enhanced innovation. And uh, the, the impact of AWS in the statement of, of uh, Amazon, 
that they will charge for IPv4, uh, people that are using IPv4, and they will get IPv6 for free. So this is one innovation where you can get cloud to give it to the enterprise, as the previous speaker has said, the enterprise don't really understand the internet because the majority are not internet companies, they're just users. And users, you cannot ask them to do something unless it comes for free to them or easier. So cloud will be uh, one key element to get IPv6 into the enterprise. So this is what we have to move, uh, you know, to get the enterprise on our side. If you, if you, if you have 73% of users of IPv6, it's not including the enterprise. So the number is not totally true because the enterprise is a big, a big chunk. And this is where, where we have to work uh, on this in the future. So on AI, I mean, a lot of people want to regulate AI, but I think it's too early to do that. You have to understand what it is. But the one that we need to regulate is what I call AI too. When we move from thinking brains to thinking machines, thinking machines is like having new society, which will be next to us. That needs regulation because it will be like people in zinc or in, in aluminum or whatever. That is going to be a dangerous thing, but most probably a lot of innovation are going to come out of this one. So quickly on cybersecurity. So on ARPANET, there were a lot of pranks of uh, viruses. And one gentleman who is very famous called Ray Tom Linzen, who invented the, the email. So the ad comes from his teletype. It was the only uh, basically the uh, uh, symbol on his keyboard, used a, uh, the uh, ads there, and also invented the mouse as well. Not too many people know this. And he was the first guy to invent the first antivirus against the creeper that was uh, uh, launched as a prank on ARPANET. And later on, <clears throat> the first crime espionage done by a German guy, uh, Marcus uh, Hess, and later on, we've got all of these Morris Worm type of uh, uh, virals that went worldwide and as of late ransomware but also uh, also nation state attacks which is uh, you know highly political and i'll finish with the blockchain so, so crypto is a uh, you know very hot uh, these days so it's it's a it's a ponzi scheme people make money on the back of other people so there is no product and so on and so forth highly speculative and there are signs that it might be stopped, but uh, the uh, SEC SEC in the US does not want to do that. But for us, it's the uh, enterprise blockchain. So, so the first one is digital not notary, notary. So Mongolia, for instance, when people sell a house or land or something, they do it by, by a handshake. But in the meantime, a lot of people have understood to make money out of this one. They sell the house of somebody else on a handshake. So Mongolia has found that a lot of houses and, and, uh, and land and so on has been sold that way. And it's the first country that has introduced blockchain through a Canadian company and it's number one blockchain country in the world with digital notary. And, and the same thing exists in the other countries. So unless you have very strong regulators in this area, it's a very, very dark place. But for sure, enterprise is going to use blockchain because security is very difficult to do on the internet. So blockchain, one tool to get transparency in the food and all kinds of applications and, and, and in the enterprise. And with this, join this gentleman to do IPv6. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Latif, président de l'IPv6 Forum. Donc,